So, next up we have another battle of some chess boxing newbies. Ooh. Yes, indeed. So our first fighter into the ring is a chess tutor from Bedford. Isn't that nice? Oh, very nice. Uh, he was nicknamed Spice Boy at university after Posh Spice because he can't hold a note and never smiles. So I think that calls for a bit of a zig zig Ah, oh, here we go. Can I get a zig zig Ah! Oh. Let's try this one. Can I get a zig zig Ah! Oh. I mean, can I get a zig zig Ah! Oh. <laughs> All right, let's bring him into the ring in the white corner, weighing in at 89 kilograms, James Spice Boy Colligan. He stands at 180 centimetres and one of his main hobbies is the sesh, as I think you can tell from his entrance. So let's make some noise one more time for our Spice Boy! <laughs> All right. Let's find out who's joining him in the ring. Another newbie, as I mentioned another person who does education. We have a primary school teacher. Aww. And he is from St. Albans. Anyone else from St. Albans in? One person. One person. Uh, when our next fight is not teaching, he has his own YouTube channel. A YouTuber, everyone. So let's give him a big welcome in the black corner, weighing in at 82 kilograms, Andrew the Pawn Slayer Smith! with a chess elo of 17.50. Let's see what happens with this battle of the new be educated. Give it up one more time for James Corrigan and Andrew Smith!
And we're back again, Simon. Two great games of chess. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one's going to unfold. Definitely. I mean, we're back to the chess. It's been great matches so far. And they're copying each other at the moment. Copycat variation. They we are don't want that, do we? Blitzing it out. This is a favourite of yours, I believe. The English opening, Simon. It is. James with the white pieces is playing the what's called the English opening. One of those 1,000... 500 openings and they're both very good chess players here very high standard and they're playing extremely quickly at the moment really, quite in equal position i think really have been blitzing out andrew pausing before pushing forward that queen's pawn a couple of squares there they've broken the symmetry in the copycat now they have well here it could go back to a symmetrical position meaning you put a mirror in the middle of the board and it copies the position so very equal as it's a basically symmetrical position here um it could come down to the boxing who's going to be a better, better boxer do we feel here i mean they're, they're both first timers on and fascinated to see how this one unfolds but they're really blitzing out the moves here you think back to the last couple they were really thinking quite quickly but these guys are already a good few moves into the game here and they've not even used a minute on their clock yet simon yeah, moving very, very quickly, which is a good sign. Maybe a little bit of nerves, first time. Must be very scary getting in that ring. I mean, you've been in the ring, haven't you, before? So were you scared the first time? Oh, petrified, Simon. Oh, petrified bet. to be in the ring. I'd yeah. much rather be this side of things, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, back to the chess. I mean, like, it does seem, again, very even. I think here Black should move his knight, the horsey. He can move it in an L shape to attack the bishop. Maybe giving up a pawn in the center, but it looks like a very interesting move. And nothing really between these two players at the moment. Okay, he's brought his bishop out. And now the queen comes out threatening the pawn. The king defends the pawn over there, and the knight comes in. White, I prefer white's position very, very slightly here. Uh, but there's nothing to give between the two players because it's so symmetrical then that having that first move that white has does give him the slight advantage and andrew is stopping again having a little bit of a thing which i think is wise you need to work out your plans here they both developed well got the pieces out got their king safe now it's about working out the foundations for the rest of the game i think it's wise to stop here and plan yeah i mean don't think too long though you've got to make a move i mean I would just push the black queen forwards one square, connect the rooks, get the rooks saying hello to each other there. Maybe you could push, what's he doing? He has good He's move He's done there. exactly what you suggested there. Must be a good move then. Oh, Must absolutely, Simon. Time well invested. These are two high quality and well matched players here. I think this one could go a good few rounds if the boxing is matched evenly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're getting the boxing, I think, very soon. But in the chess, there's not really much between these two players. It'll be a very long chess match. I can see this going three, four rounds if they can keep their energy up for the boxing. But the thing is, again, when you get hit in the head, you start making mistakes. Everyone has a plan, Simon, till they get punched in the face. Thank you, Tyson, for that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great quote. I love it. <laughs> everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face so um and i again they're playing very sensible moves here if i was white okay he takes the bishop the first capture of the game we have an exchange but not much has changed black now has a pawn in a more central position but white has two bishops and two bishops is supposed to be better than a bishop and a knight they're into the boxing Simon, that was a fascinating, uh, fascinating opening there. They both were very confident, blitzing out that copycat variation. As you say, now some imbalances have crept in towards the, the end of the round. And chess is all about, some say about imbalances. So talk us through what we've got here now on the board. Well, look at the chess board. It, it is very equal. Black has two pawns in the center compared to white's one pawn. But the thing is, the pawn that's at the bottom of the board, it's a bit of a weakness. 
So it's on, you can see White's rook is lined up against that pawn. So I think White is a little bit better here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe White should start pushing Harry the H pawn here. Yeah, because um, the, the other thing about that pawn coming towards the center is it takes it away from the defense of that other pawn there on what we call the G6 square, the one so that the king is just tucked behind diagonally. So that looks like it could be a little bit of a soft, tender spot if White can arrange his pieces in the right way there. So yeah, pushing forward your favorite Harry H pawn, one, maybe two squares to soften that up. Could be a great plan there for White. I think so. White has a light square bishop. Black doesn't have a light square bishop. So you want to open up the light squares, get your bishop into the game. And you can do that by pushing Harry. But the boxing, I mean, I have to say, they're both first time boxing. They must be so nervous. I mean, when you get in the ring, I mean, you just got to get into it. I mean, you don't box the way you're trained, do you? All that generating going through your body. You've got to calm down and just play with the technique you've learned. I mean, at that point, hopefully the muscle memory kicks in. Uh, but you can see they're both pumped for this. Bell goes. The first jab from Andrew. And it looks to me like James... Oh, already firing the right hand there. It looks like James is more of a gentleman boxer with that old style <laughs> kind of... Uh, old style... Oh, look. That, got to throw a punch though. Come on, James. Get there is here. definitely that, that dancing, the high hands. I love it. I, you, I you, do love that dancing around the ring there. He's on his back feet. Get a punch in. No, oh, hello. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, we're in. There, there we are. Oh. Couple of punches straight in. He's holding. He's holding. Referee Ronaldo Dominguez goes to break them up there. But yeah, that, that Victorian style from there. You, you can imagine wearing a pair of breeches calling out, have at you, sir. And I can indeed. And apparently the old school's boxing style was because it was bare knuckle boxing and you did less punches towards the head because when you've got gloves on, you save your fist. But in bare knuckle boxing, you don't want to hit the head as much. Oh, oh and again. Great it, punches from Andrew it, there. Great punches. James ate that one well though. Boxing is as much about the chin and how you can can take a punch. The whiskers, we say. James looks to have good whiskers on him from the couple that he's he eaten does. already. I mean, he's guarding up well, and I, I do like his guard. A good he, high right hand there. Yeah, and uh, you know he's got to he's got to get his shoulder into the punches though. When he punches, get the shoulder. Here he goes. He's getting some punches in there. You can see it's taking its toll, like. You can look, James is breathing quite heavily through the mouth there. It's, it's such a tough, physical, demanding sport, oh, it is. this you, one. You do 30 seconds of boxing, it's the most intense 30 seconds you can imagine. It might look easy watching, but when you're actually in the ring, it's incredibly tough. Simon, I would say, from experience, I have never had a more intense 30 seconds. <laughs> um. I mean, I've had some intense 30 seconds in my life, but not in this way, with the two men half naked in a ring. So, yeah. Well, well, you know, as I say, it's a Saturday night in North London. Anything goes. And it's the end. A, a, a nod of appreciation between the two of them there. And it's back to this. So we were talking about how we like the white position. Now let's look at it from the black side. So one thing I do like the look of is that knight, the, the more retreated knight, F5 looks a great square. So 97 to F5. Got great support from the two pawns. That knight there would then defend the pawn in front of the king, would also attack one of those bishops and potentially threaten to get rid of that bishop square. So yeah, black does have some trumps here as well. I mean, that's a great move, moving the black knight into the game. You'll be threatening white central pawn. So if he, if he finds that move, I think it'll be, you know, still I like white, but white's got to go in defensive for a move. Yeah. And I'm hoping now we're going to see a high quality game with chess because this is the first time they've come into chess after being punched in the face. So, yeah. I love the Icelandic berserker, don't you? I, I mean, I, uh, I, I think many sports would be enhanced by the presence of a berserker. Oh, yeah, and, I, we, and we were saying off air, regular chess itself, I think it would really bring a little bit of the, the razzmatazz that the game can sometimes see. So we are back to the chess. Simon, we were just saying it's a very interesting, maybe we like white a bit more, but it's a little bit unbalanced. It could go either way, this one. Yeah, very equal position. We're back into the chess. And um, I think there's not much between them, but we can see they've slowed down the pace. James taking a little bit of a time to adjust to the new situation. 
This is the first time both of these players have been in the ring. And there's a lot of respect for that, just getting in the ring. That's a great move by Andrew there, moving the knight and attacking White's pawn in the centre of the board. Can James defend that pawn? Well, maybe he just brings a rook into the middle. A yeah, nice he's done exactly there. that. Rooks belong on open files. And there you can see it swooping down that open, we call it the C file, the one that's the third in from the left there. This is really a fascinating position that both players have their trumps here. Simon, it could go either way. Yeah, I think very equal at the moment. And looking at the time, James has a little time advantage, but they've both got five minutes left. So it's too close to call. And now if White recaptures this with the pawn, pawns take diagonally, it's again a symmetrical position. So he's taken with the queen, keeping it a little bit more interesting there. The queen is on an open file, but again, it's a very equal position, the most equal position we've seen so far. I think it could come down to the clock here. It the could come down could to the clock cool. and James is slightly ahead, but Andrew is no slouch here whatsoever. This is, this is a high quality game. Both players jockeying for position here. Yeah, definitely. And it's gonna, who's gonna hold their nerve the best? I wanna see some tactics. I wanna see them going a bit more towards the king. Okay, there's a break in the center. Very interesting move. Now white can take that pawn, pawn takes pawn, but black will take that back. He has taken the pawn, and now black's taken that pawn back. Now if the white queen takes that knight, you will lose your queen, because the bishop would take the queen. But maybe white could take another pawn here. You have to be very careful. Okay, he's brought his knight into the position. A good move. This really opened the position up. It's very free play in the middle. It's the equivalent on Champions League night, it's the equivalent of an open midfield. They can basically both, have, oh, and that pawn's been pushed forward. Very aggressive game by Andrew. Now, I don't think I've ever seen in one of these events a pawn getting to the other end of the board. If you get your little soldier, which is the pawn, it's like your foot soldier in a, a battle. If you get it to the other side of the board, it becomes a queen. Can he push it again? Maybe he can push it again here. Simon, you always have to take care of your little soldier. And certainly Andrew is doing that here. Little soldier or big soldier, Chris? Little. Little, very, okay. Yeah. Thank you for very much so. that one. Now, that said, James, although he doesn't have a little soldier, does have How a... How do you know that? He has a very well-placed queen that is swooping down towards the king there and has the knight in support of it as well both players have their trumps here well if i was black i would push the little soldier again push it one square forwards but he has wasted so much time thinking about this move just keep an eye on the clock not sure about that move there because now the white queen can take that pawn chris which you mentioned i mean maybe you could also push the h pawn harry our friend the h pawn but if i was white i go queen takes pawn he's gone for it he's taken the pawn First blood to James. And now we could see the queen exchange as before, which will lead us towards a slightly longer game. I think if I was Andrew, I'd maybe swap off here, but... Back to the box. And he's done it. He's swapped. Simon. So, Simon... What do we think of this end game position? White, uh, a pawn up, but I have to say, Black's pieces look wonderfully coordinated here. I think Black actually got the better of that last round, really, because even now the bishop takes the queen. Black has some very good moves. For example, the Black rook could come and attack the bishop and then take a pawn back. But it's yep. that Black pawn in the middle of the board. That Black pawn, it's so dangerous for White. And when you've been hit in the head, you. It's very hard to deal with these things. That pawn, so, dangerous, supported by the knight. I mean, if you can just imagine it moving forward too, then it gives the rooks a good forking. Um, a fork being where two pieces are attacked at the same time when you struggle to save it. So I think when we come back to the chess, Andrew's certainly on top on the board, but James with a few more, more minutes. But first of all, let's see how they go again in the ring. After that, yeah, I think it's going to be forth. a very interesting round of boxing here. 
I mean, both both sides, they, first time in the ring, they did brilliantly, but who's going to get the killer punch in, we feel? And I wonder, will we see something end in the ring rather than on the board? Uh, oh, I, like, I, like, I mean, I, I do love James Gard. He does remind me, like we said, of one of those old English gentlemen. A gentleman boxer. He seems a gentleman all round there. You know, he darts in, a little, a little dance, a little punch, but they're getting involved. Oh, oh. Oh, and a big right just missed there from Andrew. That was a matter of inches away. Uh, but yeah, I do like this stuff. And if you can imagine him in a, a sort of 19th century gin palace having an illegal fight in a, like a ring scratched outside of the gin palace and a few gentlemen betting, wagering guineas on him, maybe. And then maybe a nice little game of chess afterwards, you know, oh, something exactly. like that to calm down with. And um, I, oh, I, a good right there I from mean, Andrew. James does seem to have a very solid jaw, you know, with his gentleman style of boxing. He, he's, look at him skip around the ring there. A little bit of Muhammad Ali there. I bet exactly, the old, the old shuffle. Now, now Simon, you, let's say you have a few guineas, hypothetical guineas in your pocket. Where would you put them right now? Well, I have to say, Andrew seems to have the biggest stat. He seems very rock solid, you know, very, very solid stance. I can't see I can't see James knocking him down but saying that James can take a punch and he's got the more energy he's dancing around a little bit more so I think it's fairly matched here I think we could see a result in the chess again possibly this is definitely tending towards the chess I think James yeah I mean, obviously your mind's not on it whilst you're in the ring but I think oh great that's punch a great arrow right there brings a counter left from Andrew but a that's all you want to see from James. But well, the, the, the power punching, we've seen that he can take a punch, but it's great to see him give it right back. But you can see the energy is going a little bit. And one of the things of boxing, as you're very aware, because you've been in the ring, you've been doing this, is the energy and just the stamina to keep going. And I'm now worried both boxers are looking a little bit tired, but James is still going for it. Okay, we're back to the End test. of the round there. And you're saying that how tired they were. Yes, it's a factor in boxing. But I think also it's very much a factor in the chess. Uh, with physical fatigue, the mental fatigue really does come back in. And we saw that in, in the last bout, right? We saw how Matt Crazy Arms Reed turned it around, had those two rooks on the seventh, looked like he was yeah, really on top. And that physical fatigue, I think, is what made him miss that checkmate. And Andrew has to be really careful here that he doesn't you know, overlook something like that himself. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, the physical effort here, you've got to change it now into the mental way of thinking. It's so hard to adjust now, use that mind. I mean, White has to take the Queen here, that's clear. The White Bishop has to take the Queen. And then we're going to see what Andrew plays, but I think looking at the clock here, the problem is Andrew's got three minutes, so he could be, after this round, in real big trouble. He's got to move quicker here. Got yeah, to he, move quicker. He, I mean, at the start of a round, you want to stabilise a little bit and... You know, clear your head and he's not got the luxury for that um, but yeah really a lovely position for black hair the crowd responding now to the berserker I'd, I'd say this crowd are here more for the chess than the boxing time what do you think well they are they are cheering for the chess a lot more it seems you know so they're, they're getting very into the chess and uh, I think they're ready to start So we're back with the chess, and James has just taken the queen back. Still a very equal position, but I think the important thing is that Andrew, with the black pieces, has got to keep an eye on his clock, because look at that time ticking down. He's under three minutes, and he's still not moving. He's turned into a statue. A punch to the head might have confused him a little bit there. He's taking his time to you know, clear his head, reassess the position yes the clock doesn't look good but he has that pawn in them oh i like that move yes he's, he's threatening to take the bishop if the bishop moves the black root will come flying down and take white's pawn so it's a very good move and james should just move the bishop and not think too much or he has done he's moved the bishop back and now i expect the black rook to come down and take that pawn he's just got to move that rook but he's got to play quicker it's quite an obvious move he should not be thinking about this move. Save your time for another moment. Is he going to play? He's spending too much time here. Far too much time. He's played it. He's played the right move. Simon, let's talk about pawn 
I love that black pawn in the middle of the board there. What potential does it have? Well, again, if you get a pawn to the other end of the board, you get a queen back, and the queen is the most powerful piece. So black here could, of course, try pushing the pawn. I mean, what should white do now? White can bring his rook up the board. Is he going to do that? He's going for exchanges. It's still very close. It's equal on points. They've both got the same amount of points here. So there's still not much between them, except for the clock. Andrew now under two minutes on the clock. If your time gets to zero, it doesn't matter about anything else, you lose. So he's got to move. We have an exchange of rooks. Oh, oh what a course. move! The knight has come in. A brilliant move there. And he's given a check. He's taking the rook. What an idea from Andrew there. He's now gone points up. Andrew is two points up on the board. But he's got to watch his clock. He's got to move. Very good play from fork, Andrew. Fork me, Simon. That fork was me, a, that was a good move, wasn't it? That was. This is now serious trouble for James Corrigan. Can he see this out? Get another round of boxing. This is a tough position. When you attack two pieces with one move, it's called a fork. Like a fork. You know, when you eat with a fork, it has a couple got, of prongs. Got the two prongs, yep. So he's done that. So now Andrew has a better position. He's got more points. But still, it's not that bad for James. James has a very big threat. Bishop takes pawn. He can now do that and give a check. Bishop takes pawn check. And we can see Andrew shaking his head there. Not happy with his last move. He's and he's taken... Takes pawn. Oh, this is getting spicy now, Simon. It is James with four minutes, under four minutes, but Andrew under a minute. That is a check. The bishop is attacking the black king. That's a check. He's got to move the king. Where's he going to move the king? He's moved it away. And he's changed his mind. He's got less than 50 seconds. And another check. A barrage of checks here. Two uh checks in a row from James there. And he's come back. He can't be going for these kind of checks. If you repeat the position, a lot, okay, he's going for the win, James there. He's played a different move. Again, 30 seconds left. That's no time at all there. Andrew really needs to be moving a lot quicker than this. His that time is dangerously short. Oh, oh, he changed his mind. Simon. Simon, who would you rather be here? Would you rather have that extra exchange that Black has, albeit for a pawn now, or would you rather have the extra three minutes on your clock? Uh, well, I'd definitely rather be White in the position. I mean, even on the chessboard, I don't think White's doing that badly. His knight is very strong. The bishop is very good. Yes, Black has the extra rook, but he can't really do anything with that rook. But it's all about the clock. I mean, Andrew, 25 seconds. He can only get a couple of moves in with that time. I, I would be looking to simplify this and get pieces off the board. I might even at some point, if I was black, look to exchange that rook for the knight and say, OK, I'll enter a position, a pawn down, but I'll ruin the white pawn structure. I'll have the opposite colored bishops get the hell out of this and try not to lose on time. Because really, there's just, yeah. This is not the time to do anything with 25 seconds. And as you said, the white position, everything covers itself. Very well coordinated. There's nothing that's loose or undefended. Great stuff from Corrigan to play on there, I would say. I, I, I agree as well. I mean, you know, they both showed a lack of energy in the boxing. And I think it's going to be, well, of course it's going to be harder in this round. I don't expect a knockout here. But, if, you know, they've got to go for it. They've got to get in there. Is so certainly coming out with a bit more energy after the chess round in between. Andrew still with that bouncy style that we so enjoyed. He does he's, remind me of Tigger. Remember Tigger bouncing around with all that energy? Yeah. The poo. He's like, you know, he's got that. Oh, they're in. They're in with some punches. Andrew. Oh, go for it. big right there from Andrew. But James has ate that one up and walked through it. He ate that one up as if it was his dinner, to be honest. I have to say, James is doing so well. He's been punched, and he hasn't really blinked at all. He's just sucking up those punches. Yeah, and he's just kept coming. I mean, Andrew looking like a stronger stance, really, but he's not, he's not doing any damage to James. This is, again, one I think 
that we're going to see decided on the ball. Oh, a, a good left there from Andrew. But James really just walking straight through it. Oh, you cover. love to see this exchange. You love to see the back and forth there, Simon. And remember, I, we feel if James can survive this round of boxing, he's probably got it on the chessboard. Purely by virtue of the clock there. Yeah, just look at the time. Three extra minutes, it's all the difference. They're both taking a, I would call that a mutually agreed breather there. Both of them stepping off for a little bit, sucking in the rarefied air here in the Boston Dome. Before... He's going in with a sucker punches there. But, I mean, he's, you've got to get your shoulder into those punches a bit more. Twist it in a little bit. Exactly. It's, box, it's not about the arm. It's really about the, you know, the body and the, the momentum the behind it. Go. All from the back. The weight transfer from the back foot. The least important thing, in a way, is, is the arm. They're both wailing away. This. Two sluggers who are very tired. And they're both going. Look at this. It's, again, quite intense now. Back to the chest. Back to the chest. Indeed. James's corner man there giving him a, a good nod of encouragement. Uh, love to see the heart from both of these guys here. Two first timers giving their all. I think just the heart they're showing, Chris, is like incredible. I mean, Absolutely. it's their first time in the ring. Yeah, okay, they're not the best boxers, but they're really just giving it everything they've got. And it's really impressive to see, you know. They can only get better with the boxing. But what is Andrew going to do with his time here, Chris? How's he going to survive? I would just look to get it as simple as possible. I, I genuinely would think about just exchanging that rook for the night. Um, central, I mean, obviously the king becomes a way more powerful piece in the end game. So exchange off, walk the king towards the middle, and just try and hold the position for a draw. Because there's, there's no time to do anything else if you're black, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he's just got to move. This is the only thing. It doesn't really matter what black plays, but he's got to move. 25 seconds. I mean, I have to predict he's just going to lose on time here. That's the only thing I can see. So the problem black has is activating his king. He can't move it forward one square to the left because the bishop covers it. If he moves it one square forward, there's a nasty little tactic there where the bishop can skewer as we say the rook so the problem is activating that king uh for black so if he's if he moves too quickly and doesn't see that back to the chest what a round of boxing there andrew has barely 20 seconds left on the chess well he's really speeding up here he's got 24 seconds and he's doing the right thing he's playing instantaneous this is all down to the clock 22 and he's done the right thing he's speeding up a lot Look at the way they're playing now. It doesn't even matter what they move. They've just got to move quickly here. 20 seconds. Can James win on time in this round? He's taken another pawn. And he's, he's now two pawns up. White should be winning this position. Should be winning. And James can afford to take time here. He's got three minutes to Andrew's 15. He, he can stop. He's pushing his own pawn forward. We were enjoying the pawn earlier. Now look at White's pawn. Forging its way forward, about to turn into a queen. We're going to see the pawn come into a queen. It's a queen! He has a queen on the board. And Andrew with eight seconds left. This is a lost position for Black. He's got to, he's got to get to the boxing somehow. But he doesn't have the time. He's got five seconds. Four this is seconds, over. Four seconds. Four. Three. Two. Oh. One. Oh. Zero! And game over. A win on time, but clearly White was winning on the board there, Simon. Yeah, very well played from both players. Really good play. And James taking it in the chest there, but for their first time ever, very impressive. Very brave to just get in the ring. Yeah. Hey, wait for the ref! Wait for the ref! The winner is white. Yeah. So we are giving it up for a winner. Defaulted on time, unfortunately, but our winner is in the white corner, James Carrigan. Give it up for both our fans.
fighters, both first timers, both educators. Well done to both our chess boxes.